Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Mrs. Phillips. I am going to be flowing, which is why you see a document in front of you instead of my face, but I'll also be helping moderate the debate. I'm gonna give everybody like two more minutes to come in, then I'm gonna introduce the debaters to you all, and then we'll go ahead and get started. While we're waiting these couple minutes, if all of the participants can please make sure that you have paper, how many off are you all gonna be reading again? Five. 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 Okay, so if everybody can make sure they've got like seven sheets of paper and uh, pen, two different color pens as well for flowing purposes, do that in the next two minutes and we'll get started in a couple minutes. All right, without further ado, it looks like we have everybody that we are going to have here. Uh, welcome everyone. I'd like to introduce you to the esteemed fellows debaters for this year. Uh, the first I'd like to introduce the 1A, Sam Meacham from MBA. Sam, give him a wave. There's then the 2A from Minneapolis South, that's Gabe. And then we have Allison from CKM McCl or CK McClatchy. Uh, and she is the one N. And then we have Lexi Yeager from Meadows and she is the two N. Welcome, thank you so much fellows for helping educate the younger minds. And we will go ahead and get started. All the people who are here, it looks like it's all of my lab. So I will be making the speech docs available to you after the debate for when you have to make a decision. Um, but you will not get the speech docs during the debate, which means that you have to flow and use your verbal processing skills. I will be moderating occasionally um, in between the speeches, uh, but thank you very much. And we'll go ahead and get started. All right, you all have the one they see. Okay. Awesome. Uh, everyone will need two sheets of paper. All right. Good. The advantage is DNA. DNA forensic science has a massive and other failure errors and privacy violations ensure DNA databases like CODIS exacerbate racial inequalities in the criminal justice system. I'm in 19. There are 50 million profiles in CODIS. Logistical and ethical problems with DNA testing include human error and bias, looking at innocent people to crimes, privacy rights, and spatial disparities. Scientists arrive at different results. There are cases of text made mistakes. There was a match and there was none. A genetic drag every families with no link in the investigation of programming traditional investigatory work that would broaden a search. The idea that DNA is more reliable, perpetuate the challenges, assuming there is truth when results are investigated to the wrong sources. The most powerful 
for fatigue for familial DNA searching is a disproportionate impact on black and Latino individuals. Disparities in imprisonment translates into disproportionate collection of African American men having their DNA stored at the 49% of F profiles are from African Americans. Possible harms are accused surrounds on minority communities, exacerbating racial disparities and guilt by association. And this magnifies the stereotype of black criminality and legitimizes the conflation of genetics and aggression that ensures even greater racial inequality in criminal justice and society as a whole. Roberts 11 racial stories in DNA database make communities of color vulnerable to state surveillance. DNA will intensify racial disparities in the CJS people and databases become false accused of a crime. The federal government and say you send DNA collection into people primarily on minorities. Blacks and Latinos have fewer resources to challenge abuses by analysts, stereotypes as criminals to the myth of DNA infallibility. Database from uh, guilty and innocent black men alike will magnify stereotypes of black criminality. DNA for African Americans will are merely arrested and best the myth of black criminality in a state policy. The government treats every black person as a suspect to legitimize the myth that blacks have a genetic propensity to crime. The public will link genes causing aggression with genetic profiles. Americans will become more indifferent to racial injustice and law enforcement. And DHS is also adding arrestee samples from non criminal migrants that pays away for mass biosurveillance stigmatization and puts them at risk of wrongful convictions. House Lender 20. Trump has been collecting DNA samples from illegal asylum seekers under a new rule that dramatically expands codes. DHS for those of having to collect DNA from detained immigrants who have no criminal uh, history of forced collection from non criminals who foretell an Orwellian future mass database for full population surveillance. The rule will stigmatize immigrants and pave the way to misuse of genetic data as well as wrongful convictions. Physicians call the rule a dangerous misapplication of biotechnology. The administration estimates 748,000 additional samples annually and DNA collection from those arrested but not convicted. It creates a perverse incentive for police to arrest more people regardless of their likelihood of their connection to a crime. That exacerbates inequality. Trigger 15. Making new tools available to state agents and the exercise of the arrest power. Federal DNA collection laws provide for involuntary collection of samples, programs, or offer collateral benefits. Some desirable result beyond prosecution. The potential to solve a cold case or deter a recidivist and sense of relevant to discretionary decision to arrest particular individuals. Benefits relative to independent of the suspect's guilt makes arrest of some suspects more attractive. Decision to arrest may be influenced by awareness of the screening regimes. The collateral incentives of a redistributive effect on arrestees are wrong ethno racial lines and an average effect on arrest quality results in greater unwarranted inequality and racialization of DNA databases pushes closer to a universal data bank of minorities cloaked in the objectivity of science that's ethically indefensible and exacerbates inequality that suitor and ten decision about who to arrest reflects possible racial and socioeconomic biases grace is not a neutral factor the rest of minority groups are overrepresented databases means the pool some of these feature searches will be disproportionately include minorities but friendly searches will to minority family members being subject to investigation resulting four times the African Americans identified this week like the magnified conviction during the cumulative effect it's a universal data bank for minorities Minority overrepresentation reinforce stereotypes about criminality. The fact that genetics and neutral may testify the possession of these views are accurate. Eugenic science reaches discriminatory conclusions and lack of restrictions enable function creep that creates open ended and indefinite genetic surveillance. Feral 13. DNA can provide insights into family, the legitimacy of birth and predisposition. Law enforcement analysis jeopardizes Fourth Amendment rights to the absolute statutory requirement. The FBI is free to use more revealing portion of DNA. Act requires local, state, and federal labs to comply with the federal requirements. Scientists will screen for behavioral change, health conditions, mental illness, the that could cause social stigma, employment discrimination, and barriers to health insurance. The federal law does not prohibit states from using DNA for whatever purpose necessary. Unrestrained statutes pay for function creep when databases take on uh, new purposes with the open endness of surveillance and involves the levels unforeseen. And that function creep opens the door to a new form of racist biotechnical eugenics. The more profiles they have, the easier it is. Roman Santos, uh, 10. DNA can perpetuate discriminatory practices. The U.S. failed to employ privacy regulations. The eugenics movement the pre of scientific endeavor following the advent of biotech. New eugenics conveyed the ability to manipulate genetic makeup, removing traits out of society. Researchers will never try to identify the uh, genes responsible for particular traits. This reality is not as far off as some may think. And the app saw skyrocketing indefinite rotation of DNA samples from acquitted individuals and prevents function creep and misuse of DNA databases. Feral 13. Because states must comply with the federal standards and the amendment prohibiting the preservation of stimulus post acquittal would avoid policy. 58% of arrestees can face DNA sampling despite the acquittal. These figures are projected to skyrocket. Bring response to Maryland v. King. States will require sampling from misdemeanor offenders. Absence of explicit statutory requirements. Genetic info could be used in sinister ways. DNA can predict whether an arrestee is likely to reoffend, which can influence sentencing criteria. Only seven states automatically explain to the sample that the DNA identification act should require explicitly the automatic deletion of samples on the low charges posted on the creation of the profile until after the arrestee is convicted. DNA samples be automatically deleted upon the creation of the DNA Profile mitigate opportunities for function creep genetic marker scheme and misuse. And the plan creates constraints on the states that permit circumvention to participate in CODIS. They must follow the federal statute. Pre 15. The promise of external regulation is more likely. Local databases have indicated openness to regulation. Current law requires states to certify compliance with quality standards and with privacy protection and qualified participation in CODIS. A new law could require that exchange for participation to certify the local databases in the jurisdictions, follow reforms that would cause states to comply with local databases or expanding states to value their participation in CODIS. Thus, the plan. The United States federal government should enact substantial criminal justice reform in the area of forensic science by requiring the automatic deletion of deoxyribonucleic acid samples and like, charges against the rest of the prohibiting the creation of deoxyribonucleic acid profiles of individuals in the United States until after they've been convicted of a crime and requiring the immediate deletion of samples after a profile is created. Contention 2 is framing.
Any claims of util first or considered future generations are the logic of eugenics. Expert 13, common definition of the question has the health of the population and the red decline, degeneration, or crisis. Eugenics was based on utilitarian ethos that required some sacrifice of liberty to achieve the greater good. Eugenics was transformed into policy designed to address social problems of restricted immigration and then anti miscegenation, compulsory sterilization, and eugenic euthanasia, and systematic genocide. Programs rallying the strong belief in for a commitment to uh, utilitarianism and intergenerational justice and sacrifice for the greater collective good of the future generations. Excellent your risk logic is mathematically incoherent. Tip the scales toward probability monthly. 15. Existential risk strikes me as philosophically shallow. They seem to share the basic form of Pascal's wager. The argument seems to ignore a new amount of merely possible existential risk scenarios as well as work will take to prevent these. It's unlikely we have the resources to invest best in the ball unless we spread the day that this action becomes mainly. The argument ignores completely the high likelihood that the resources will be wasted and there are substantial opportunity costs to not use the very previous strategy with better threats, albeit maybe not as massive as existential risk. None of that is worth any consideration in light of the massive stakes of existential risk, like religious uh, belief and a probability centered framework best for us, both ongoing violence and existential as Karnowski, 14 Bosch, relies on specific prediction, backed by little other than speculation, minimize excellent risk would include any contribution to general human empowerment. In the face of uncertainty, is rationally make a smaller positive difference whether one or not one can trace a specific causal pathway to making a large impact in the far future. The track record of do something good is far better than high uncertainty arguments about utility, short term considerations, but have you done good rather than pouring resources into the far future? General empowerment mitigates cash power risk. The best approach may be a positive difference to the present and be skeptical of their long later change. Each internal link reduces the probability of the impact. We shouldn't have to get the dissent to zero for the after outweigh. Conetta, 98, improbable comic scenarios based public discourse, cognitive research caused the Othello effect, the material of plausible but false assumptions that was far from scenarios to commerce, a number of links which may seem probable, although likely it dwindles. We said the impression is possibility. Snapshots offer a highly selective views, talks for our concern with a horde of dangers and past their protest of non-serial probability by lowering the threshold. They established an impossible standard wisdom against with a setting of priorities of what appears likely and what not. And all risk of extinction together is 0.2% per year. That's a starting risk of their dissent. Simpson, 16. The fate of our species can be forecast. Our results may not change. The immediate value is in agreement with the forecast. Humanity's prognosis for the coming century is well approximated by a global cash flow risk of 0.2% per year. And DNA evidence is inaccurate and subjective. Chair 16. Science is only reliable as manner in which we use it. The forensic analysis job more difficult. Math is more complicated. The example is very small, degraded. All these might drop out or appear to exist when they uh, do not. Yeah, the evidence is 17 technicians. Only one of the logs 70 logic issues concur. If you show 10 colleagues, uh, make sure you will get 10 different answers. The subjectivity is still there. Standards and training levels and quality varies. Even the trace of DNA can become the foundation of a case contamination. It's an obvious hazard. DNA transfer is never more obsessed on every less difficult evidence. Text of comps and prosecutors be the other next. I'm ready for it. Reading down their next. That was the last card of the one I see. Oh, the second to last card of the one I see. All right, are you good? Yeah. Good, okay. Post-off, DNA can still be used as evidence in court, right? Yes, but there's a lot less DNA for courts to be less able to use. Less DNA. Okay, your Hall Center evidence cites issues of lab contamination, statistical errors, and problems in the collection process that are causing faulty evidence to be presented into trials. If you only delete profiles after someone is proven not guilty, how do you prevent people from being convicted on faulty evidence? Well, the argument is that people are currently being convicted on faulty evidence because this, the database has so much data from arrestees. Our argument is that in the world of the AF, when only people who are convicted have their DNA collected, in, in the world where samples are deleted, Wait, there would be much less a chance. Wait, but samples would still be collected right after someone's arrested. Like whether yeah, or not they're, they're all, convicted they're doesn't delete. affect Sam whether samples, samples are always collected. deleted in the world of the AF. It, samples yeah, can but be collected, but there, I feel like your no, evidence nothing, says that what's that causing the backlogs is the initial influx of samples to forensic laboratories. So if the same amount of initial Ooh. samples are being like put into laboratories, how do you prevent backlogs? Well, we haven't made a claim about backlogs. Our argument is about how yeah. expansive DNA collection creates the risk of false convictions and the creates a perverse. Yeah, but backlogs is officers. what's like creating faulty evidence. But okay, well, well no, it's not backlogs. Here's... It's the question of just having DNA in the first place. DNA. Okay. On your Traeger evidence, it says that offers or sorry, officers have an incentive to arrest and collect samples so that their departments can have increased conviction rates. If DNA can still be used to convict someone post AF, why would the arrest and collect incentive go away? Because it doesn't well, matter because, to officers if profiles are deleted. Well, I understand that question, but the, the argument, the problem with that is that officers would have no incentive to arrest people if they don't think they've committed a crime, because they know post AF that if they arrest someone who's later acquitted, they don't get to keep okay. any of their DNA information. What happens to samples that are already in CODIS? Uh, they, I think they'd stay there, right, Gabe? Yeah. Okay, so if 
of samples in CODIS are made up of minorities and those still stay there, how do you solve the like black criminality myth if the numbers still show that the majority of people who are criminals are minorities? Well, it's a question of the continuing utilization of that database for Why is uh, it the continuous DNA? using? Because in the status quo, the reason why the black criminality myth exists is because like almost the majority is of minorities. Like yeah, why yeah, does it so require that's, that's continuing for that? But it would dramatically decrease the amount of DNA being collected, which would probably have a still less of a, less of an adverse okay. effect along. Let's talk about framing. Lines. How does the AF framing deal with two actions of equal probability? Uh, we don't think that magnitude is irrelevant. We rather think that probability, due to time constraints in debate, due to human cognitive biases, uh, the mathematical okay. incoherence of evaluating probability times magnitude, probability okay. should be Just one more question. Over. What extent right. of black criminality do you have to solve to weigh that as an impact? Well, I mean, obviously there's no number, but like, I, I think that if we make a meaningful difference in improving the lives of people, then that's a reason to death. Okay. All right, excellent. Excellent job. Uh, just really quickly, I wanted to highlight a couple things about the cross-examination, then we'll start with the one in C. Um, make sure you all have enough paper to flow the off case. Each off case should be on an individual sheet of paper. The, I would like to you all to note how effective the cross-examination was and in pointing out part of the evidence from the 1AC in order to highlight arguments that I presume are going to be made in the 1NC. So one of the things I want you all to watch out for as the 1NC is making case arguments, think about how that cross-examination uh, set up those arguments. I know that's something my students struggle with consistently. And so, you know, looking at those connections and learning from maybe some good examples of how they're doing that in CrossX, plus the way the CrossX use the evidence and the way the 1AC, you know, stuck to using their evidence as well, right? They weren't, it wasn't just conjecture, but they would refer to kind of the logic in their framing cards, for example, and they were answering the arguments to also set up the two AC responses. All right, are you ready, Allison? Yes, uh, right. it's five off and then the advantage and then framing. Is anyone not ready? Cool. First off is the counter plan. Pursuant to Article 5 of the Constitution, at least two-thirds of the Senate, the states should call a limited constitutional convention and at least three-fourths of the states should ratify a constitutional amendment that deoxyribonucleic acid samples must not be retained post-acquittal and prohibit the creation of deoxyribonucleic acid profiles of individuals in the United States until they have been convicted of a crime. The counter plan builds support through consensus. It's key to social change that avoids the rollback DA to the AF for Muley 4. Formal amendment to costly court, uh, a method of updating uh, failed to build support five justices adopting Kerr's Heil decision caused formal amendment more effectively discourage subsequent efforts by losers overturn for change amendments or more enduring than judicial decisions they stabilize new rule settlements produced by article 5 more enduring over time second off is the counter plan the 50 states in all relevant territories should cease all cooperation with the federal government on collection retention and distribution of dna samples except for the sole purpose of supplying the united states federal government with unusable and or fake dna samples remove all dna samples from state databases cease all cooperation with federal law enforcement officials who use dna samples to inform arrests cease dna sample collection of migrants and instead supply CODIS with fake DNA samples of all migrants that would have otherwise had their DNA collected, express their support for sanctuary cities, and remove any impediments to the creation of sanctuary cities, create a fund to pay for the legal fees of immigrants and migrants, ban so genetic surveillance not included in databases of DNA samples, announce that DNA evidence is incredibly unreliable, and offer to testify to that fact in any court case in the United States involving the use of DNA evidence. State expungement policies solve. They can ensure samples are removed from all databases. Mercer and Gable, 14. Every state regulates the genetic information it acquires at the statewide level. The statutes are anything but uniform local data bases are not subject to guidelines amending would not be difficult and Alaska, Missouri, and Washington have already done so. The state should bear the burden. Samples from non-qualifying individuals should qualify for automatic expungement. If the qualifying charges does not result in conviction, the individual should qualify for expungement. Third off is the critique. The criminal justice reform is a superficial and deceptive attempt to perfect the prison industrial complex. Karastakis 19. The movement for reforming prisons does not even seem to have originated in recognition of failure. The system is broken only to the extent that one believes its purpose is to promote the well-being. The function of the system is to preserve racial and economic hierarchy, then its bureaucracy 
democracy is performing well. Language is a suit of armor polished to shocking glitter. The criminal justice reform consensus is superficial. Those who want largely to reserve the current punishment must obfuscate the difference between changes that will transform it and tweaks a focus on public conversation at the margins. The alternative is a, rattled, a radical disidentification with the state of affirmative politics in favor of abolitionism, Rodriguez 08. Behind reformist struggles, there's an unspoken politics of assumption. Despite imprisonment, repression, and violent policing, the establishment left does not care to envision the abolition of U.S. domestic warfare. Generations will emerge against the living apocalypse. How can we live with ourselves the state of emergency? What were the fundamental concerns of our progressive organizations? We require scholars, scholarly activist framework to understand the state must be radically confronted on an abolitionist politics. The establishment left remains unwilling to address the questions of social survival. Uh, storytelling is inseparable from the on the ground shifting, re-raging, and recommitting of resources. This process of producing the state is an active, tangible, and identifiable structure of power and dominance. What some scholars call statecrafts, uh, leaders must reflect how they support and reproduce racism, white supremacy, state violence, and domestic warfare. Our hostic, hostic, historical moment suggests the need for rupturing one political move is long overdue. Progressive identification with the creative possibilities of insurgency, the abolition of domestic warfare necessitates a rigorous theoretical and pragmatic approach to counter an anti-state radicalism. This political shift requires a sustained labor of radical vision. Fourth off is the dissad. Trump will lose now, but voters are still malleable. Hill 317. He is building a diverse coalition of support that if maintained would win him the state. The, the, the state. Biden won Michigan. What stands out about Biden's performance is his ability to draw support from districts that inevitably uh, that swung heavily for Trump in 2016. Biden appeals to Democrats and independents of many different backgrounds and political preferences. The question is whether this group of voters will stick to broad base of big swing state is promising. And Trump is desperately trying to portray himself as a CJR reformer, but that rings hollow now because of no accomplishments beyond the first step act, Solemn 20. Trump's attempt to portray himself as CJR attacked Biden, giving Trump silence on how he would reform drug policy or make the criminal justice system less violently punitive. Trump touts his support for the First Step Act. He has said nothing of further steps beyond the relatively modest reforms. At least he has laid out specific reforms. Trump has done nothing beyond bragging. And the plan gives Trump that key accomplishment. CJR is a salient issue that flips the election. Chung 19. Criminal justice reform became an issue. He signed the First Step Act into law. Trump is an opportunist who is taking advantage of the void. Those running for the highest office in the country are underestimating the importance of the electorate of performing criminal justice should be central for candidates. CJR must be integral candidates need a substantive policy. It's an issue voters care about for one which candidates will be held accountable. And Trump re-election permanently collapses U.S. leadership. It leads to global instability and great power nuclear war, right 20. Trump has questioned the utility of U.S. alliances. If Trump were one re-election, that could change quickly as he would feel more empowered. Trump would pull out of NATO in a second term by dissolving U.S. alliances. The strategy would destabilize the regional security and power right-wing nationalists in Europe and aggravate the threat of major power conflict. First, retrenchment would worsen regional security competition in Europe and Asia. Regional conflicts open up implicating U.S. interests. The second problem with retrenchment involves new nuclear proliferation conflicts among have a greater chance of spiraling into escalation. Third, retrenchment heightened nationalism and xenophobia. Fourth, a problem concerns regional stability over global retrenchment. Fifth off is topicality. Criminal justice refers to the entire complex of institutions and people involved with crime. Shinar 75. Criminal justice denote the entire complex and substantial reform requires a wholesale approach to the overall criminal justice system. More 78. Holistic approach is essential to substantial reform. The task is to define courses of conduct, avoid the availability of existing institutions to swallow changes. Violation, the plan targets a subset of one of the area specified in the resolution rather than changing policy across the entire area. It, a voting issue to preserve predictable limits. They make it topical to decriminalize or increase enforcement of any crime on the books. They allow asset focus on a single federal agency or decriminalizing any crime or regulation, which is unfair for the negative case. Uh, function creep isn't true, right? Like 15. DNA evidence is collected, kept, and used in CODIS database. Police laboratories are not even equipped to do such testing. DNA profiling for law enforcement purposes is confused. There's no extra information beyond identification. The DNA code has no use outside the forensic science system. Most consumers willingly provide much inf private information are identified by barcode or are, are stored and handled with the same pr 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 protection as criminal evidence. And the plan fails to establish privacy regulations, which means outsourcing to other private companies allows for discrimination. 1AC Roman Santos 10. The U.S. has failed to employ comprehensive privacy regulation that would prevent the government from sharing a, a DNA profiles in a DNA database with other groups. Some states, such as Massachusetts, Louisiana, and North Carolina, include a vague open-ended authorization that allows the database to be used for other humanitarian purposes. Alabama statute explicitly authorizes the creation and use of DNA population statistical database to provide data relative to the causation, detective, and prevention of disease or disability, as well as to assist in educational and or medical research. Um, local databases circumvent Craig 15. Federal funding that allows local law enforcement officials to bypass local budget process provide firms interested in expanding the use of DNA forensic analysis. CODIS remains an ineffective crime solving tool. Local DNA databases are not required to comply with any of these federal regulations. They are free to include consensual DNA samples. Local DNA databases are also built with DNA processing from private laboratories. Also, private laboratories circumvent in Van Ness 20. Police across the United States are uploading crime scene DNA to GEDMATS and other databases where pur pur purchasers of genetic testing kits from companies such as 23andMe and Ancestry can share their DNA in hopes of finding a long lost relative 
Massachusetts law enforcement use of DNA databases has opened another front on the glowing battle over digital privacy. What have the right to what we call the Wild West? There aren't a lot of rules on the ground. Framing, behavioral psychology proves we underestimate risks of extinction or 20. Psychology identified we neglect existential risk versus availability for people to estimate likelihood based on recall. We underweight events which are without precedent. Availability with existential risks fails. If what we're seeing is believing we step over the precipice to cope neglect, we have trouble caring about something 10 times as important. And utilitarianism is a good metric for evaluating impacts, green 10. Science is telling us that moral judgment is not rational enterprise. It is unlikely that there is any coherent moral theory that can accommodate moral institutions. It defines deontology in terms of values that are not deontological, Kantian self-characterizations fail to distinguish deontology from other approaches to ethics. Consequentialists are against treating people as objects by counting every person's well-being. If you ask a deontological person why it's wrong to push someone in order to save five others, answers will be tautological, others will be more sophisticated, but these answers don't explain anything. There seems to be something deeply right because they give a, vo a voice to powerful moral emotions, but they don't really explain the philosophy in question. I'm going to run to the bathroom before Crossex. Okay. All right, while he's doing that, you should be kind of looking over your flows, understanding some of the strategy. Uh, did anybody feel like they could get all the planks to the counter plan, the state's counter plan? That is an example of a multi plank counter plan. Uh, so, the um you can see they have two counter plans there's a k so i imagine there's going to be a question about conditionality here in cross-examination there's the disad and then there's a t argument and they have some case arguments um, that are primarily focused on ways that the affirmative doesn't exactly resolve some of the questions um, or the problems that they're saying they can resolve in regards to preventing eugenics or uh, racial profiling in uh, DNA or racial stereotyping. So there are, I think you should be kind of thinking if you were in this debate, what is the net benefit to each of the counter plans? It should be pretty easy to figure that out, given there's only one thing that could be the net benefit. Uh, but, you know, think about if you, what I would like you all to do right now, I guess, is write down how much time would you spend on each flow if you were the 2A, see? How much time would you spend on the case, the counter plans, the K, and T? Just write that at the top of your flow. Um, as cross access going on. Go ahead, kiddos. All right, you good? Yeah. All right. Uh, counter plan K, what's the status? Conditional. Uh, can, can you kick planks? No. No. Okay. Uh, the state's counter. Okay, the state's counter plan. Uh, you figure out that the states don't cooperate with the federal government, and the states expunge their own DNA samples. How does that stop the federal government through things like the? FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, from arresting people on their own? The parts of the plank that provide fake or unusable DNA samples we think would make federal databases unusable. Okay. So I mean, I guess if you provide them fake DNA, what's to stop the federal government or the lab techs from matching fake DNA samples falsely to innocent people? I don't think it's fake DNA samples. I think it's profile. Oh, no. I, I mean, like, it, regard, regardless of what it is, like, if you give, like, a fake sequence of DNA, what's to stop the lab techs who are under pressure from the police I think we would say fake samples that? are using, like, real samples that are faulty are being used to prosecute people now. Also, exactly, that's my the, point. Why don't you make that worse? We wouldn't, one, because we say that states and localities would testify in court to say that all DNA is compromised, which means it shouldn't be used to prosecute people. Okay, so, but how does that work in federal courts? And among it immigrants. says, announcing that DNA evidence is incredibly unreliable and offer to testify to the fact in any court case in the United States involving the use of DNA Wait, evidence. What evidence, that says that state, what evidence says that states have the authority to like bust into a federal courtroom and say, hey, the DNA is faulty? Like, what evidence says that's even possible? Fiat? Yeah, so you, I mean, okay. Uh, Gabe, can you make an argument about like a civil war or something? Um, 
elections disad, your uniqueness argument is from March 17th, your link cards are from March 9th, and the other ones from 2019. How does that assume the pandemic, the protests, the economic recession? Yeah, uh, we can read more evidence specific to those issues in the block, but I mean, I can go through those things one by one if you want. The pandemic, we think that an economic recovery is coming. It affects the Democrats just as much. I mean, as I mean, but Trump. like, the, the, you, but as, like, this, as of this point, you've not read any qualified evidence saying such. Well, we don't think that those are issues that implicate the validity of the arguments made in those. You don't arguments. think the coronavirus implicates the validity of an argument about the election? Okay. Well, I mean, obviously um, it intersects it, but it doesn't change the fact that, our, okay. you know, our uniqueness argument is that All Trump right. will Thank you. That makes sense. Um, I guess uh, the framing page, is there a probability of an extinction risk that is too low to evaluate? If it's statistically insignificant, but we'll what win that. What is that? Wait, if, it's, if it's indistinguishable from like the, the background noise or like the, okay. yeah. That makes sense. Um, I guess election still, uh, the right card why did Trump not retrench during his four years in power, including two years in which he had a fully Republican House and Senate? Because he has he had something to lose, and he feel like he has he has to appease to like or appeal to um, Republican okay. institutions, but he wouldn't if he had got reelected. Thank you. Um, before they get started with the two AC, uh, I just wanted to, or while I don't know if you need prep time or not, but. I'm good, but. Okay, give me like 10, 10 seconds then. Um, hopefully you all have written down how long you would spend on each flow, and then you should have a timer going while Gabe is speaking, and kind of see if you matched like one of the better debaters in the country, right, and how he is going to address the 2AC. I know Gabe, no pressure. Uh, so the, you want to see if you can kind of match that same timing or see if you know you thought maybe he was off or if you had some reasoning of why that's true um but also i wanted you all to note that there was this question about the federal courts so one of the things i thought was really good in this last cross-examination is sam asked a pretty logical question about the nature of the you know, difference between a state court or state case and a federal case and whether or not states could act in federal cases. Um, Lexi gives the answer fiat or Allison gives the answer fiat, it kind of overwhelms that. Uh, you have to decide whether or not you think that is true or not. But I want, the one thing I really wanted to focus on was Notice that he's using his background knowledge of the topic to ask logical solvency questions of the counter plan. This is why all the topic lectures that you have had and will have over the course of the camp are so important to you developing sound strategy over the course of the year. So please make sure that you're using your notes so when you, you can go back to them and ask those sorts of good logical questions about counter plans or disads. All right, thank you, Gabe, whenever you're ready. Cool. Um, the order is case. I'm going to answer the substance and then I'm going to do framing. Then it's topicality subsets. Then it is the state multiplying counterplan. Then it's the constitutional convention counterplan. Then it's the abolition critique. And then it's the elections dissent. Okay, cool. DNA collection causes eugenic policing. It results in the broad overcriminalization of whole communities and is getting extended to migrants right now. That is a fundamentally unethical practice that must be rejected. One NC1, yes. Function creep. This card says nothing. Traeger and Bartusiak indicate that DNA surveillance causes police to have the perverse incentive to arrest more, but we also didn't read an impact of function creep, so it doesn't matter. It's unconsensual, which is different from the grocery store. The circumvention debate. Group two, one NC2 through four. First, the cities and states have to follow federal regulations. They want to be a part of CODIS, even 
post app. That's the Krieg evidence. Second, their evidence is about tiny labs that do not implicate the majority of the advantage. Private labs are super small scale and no police use them in the status quo. Third is there's no funding for these databases that they highlight and they're re-highlighting. They're not as big as 15 million people who are unjustly criminalized, which is very different. The framing debate or evidence is wrong. Debate proves we have a perverse incentive to over-focus on existential risks. Even if this evidence is broadly true, it does not apply to this space. But existential risk focus is bad. First, over-focus on magnitude causes bad policy mix making. Fixing small-scale problems has ripple effects that solve existential risks in the future. That's the Kabanovsky evidence. It incentivizes forever wars because there's always a risk that other leaders have weapons of mass destruction. Second, it's decision paralysis. Math is impossible at extremely high values, so all actions have the same outcome. It means the dissent is e either inevitable or statistical noise. One and C2, we don't disagree with utilitarianism being good. We just think you should focus on the probability of those impacts. Good story bias means that every internal link makes the risk much lower, but makes the dissent much more persuasive. And they have conceded there's a 0.2% risk of extinction, including the dissent's impact, which would cap the probability for the dissent. Topicality, we meet. We make a rule that applies to the whole field. We only use some DNA, though. No app would meet their interpretation if we don't. And T is a question of mandate, not effect. Second is substantial means of considerable size and effect. Corbyn is running. Substantial is defined as many considerable telling effect as substantial reforms. Third is forensic science is the application of science to the criminal justice system. More than six, forensic science covers professions involved in the application of science to the criminal justice system. For reasons to prefer a point of predictability. Their evidence has neither intent to define nor exclude. It mixes burdens. Assess the for a reform to be substantial and needs to solve. Predictability outweighs because it's a precondition for common research and clash. Second is afground. All absolutes to unbeatable picks under their model. And there are no solvency advocates. Third is functional limits. States, abolition, courts, and politics check. Fourth is they don't solve limits. Decriminalization apps are a wholesale change to sentencing and policing. Fifth is reasonability. Their interpretation causes a race to the margin, margins that crowds out any of the research benefits of debate. The counterplans, um, the state's counterplan, permutation do both shields and net benefit because it's perceived as Trump being forced by the state. Second is permutation do the AF and the last plank. It shields the link because it isn't CJR, but stopping DNA because it's faulty. Third, it links to the terminal impact to election state. Federal civil war means we can't effectively signal power projection. That was cross X. Fourth is it links to that benefit. Trump would take credit as being a master deal maker who solves CJR without the federal government intervention. So it's the best of both worlds for him. Fifth is there's an immigration decision. The counterpoint doesn't solve DNA collection from non-criminal immigrants at the border. Sanctuary cities do not solve DNA collection in DHS jurisdiction. Sixth is fake DNA is bad. One AC Farrell indicates that causes false convictions, which turns the kind of one. Seventh is there's a federal arrest dissent. The Fed collects DNA from tons of people. I learn 11. Federal government expanding individuals targeted federal military and DOC offenses collect DNA from individuals who arrested all arrestees and all non-citizen detainees. Eighth is a 50-state uniform fiat as a voter. Excuse the lit base. It makes it impossible to find deficits and it undermines topic education. Non-uniform fiat solves. Ninth is counterplans must have a solvency advocate. Anything else is unpredictable, not grounded in the lit base, and does not justify the counterplan. At worst, we get new 1AR solvency deficits. The con-con counterplan. Permutation do both would shield the link would be perceived as federal follow-on to state pressure. Fiat just means it is desirable. Second is permutation do the plan or the counterplan's amendment is ratified. They introduce delay, which solves the net benefit. Chisholm and five, actual ratification can take much longer than the 27th. It was proposed, but now ratified until 203 years later. The length of time depends on the gravity of the issue. Third is there's no rollback to said. The permutation and durable fiat should solve this. Fourth is delay permutations are good. They're key to check process garbage that competes off immediacy and delay counterplans that seal the app. There's a solvency deficit to delay. It would take a few years to come to fruition. Trump is expanding surveillance to a million new migrants right now, and it would require court interpretation, which would water it down. Sixth is Con Con is a voter. It's impossible to get solvency deficits without comparative literature and fiat erases any reason it fails. Seventh is it links to that benefit. If Trump is fishing for a CJR win right now, he would obviously sign on to the counterplan as a major constitutional reform that he supports. Conditionality is a voting issue for argument responsibility. It lowers the bar for argument introduction where privileges on model of debate that denies the 2AC its best offense by preferring technical drops over clash and encouraging asinine counterplans. One condo and multiple debates solve their offense. The criticism, permutation do both. Either the alternative overcomes the links or it is insufficient to solve their impact. There are two net benefits to the permutation. A sub point, it solves backlash. Immediate abolition would cause white fascist takeover. So it's better to incrementally disempower the state. Second is the AF. Policy action is necessary to resolve ongoing eugenic violence. That is a disad to the alternative and a defense of our politics. Third is framework. The AF must prove the, the K must prove the fiat and implications of the plan are worse than the alternative um, or the status quo. The impact is fairness. Their framework shifts away from the controversy we're equally prepared to debate about. That decks clash, which is the only metric the judge can use to fairly 
determine the winner, forcing us to defend the costs and benefits of our political advocacies is key to testing radical thought, which turns the alternative's education forth as they only get to fiat the USFG. It's impossible to compete with any alternative without comparative literature and is non-reciprocal. You can't beat the fiat's people stop being racist counterpoint. Fifth is a perf um, performative contradiction. They said the state is desirable and liberal change is good on other pages, which means we should get to sever our reps and they don't get cross applications. Our impacts outweigh because we have proximate solvency for some violence and they only get to weigh the impacts of the links that the alternative can solve because anything else is not a unique opportunity cost to the plan. There's no link to the AF. The AF reduces DNA surveillance. Small substantive police reforms work and the permutation would check back against broader violence. DNA overstretch incentivizes communities um, to get surveilled. It turns the alternative. Genetic testing of infants and prison populations is expanding biosurveillance. That's the Ramshaw evidence. The elections just said. First is the link and the uniqueness evidence. Do not price in COVID or the protest. It means they should overcome the AF because it is smaller than COVID. Second is Trump wins now. Primary model, Muso 529. The key to another victory of the president lies in examination of primary versus Trump won them very easily. Biden had a great deal of trouble that comes from the edge of Trump is a 91% chance of being a reelected base on statistical and historical theory. Third is partisanship is locked in. Liberals will view the plan as insufficient. Conservatives love everything Trump does anyways. Fourth is the election is too far away. Trump could cancel it. Russia might hack it and other events could outweigh in the next week. COVID and protests prove that predictions are impossible. Fifth is the Afghan help Trump. No one cares about DNA collection and law enforcement thinks it's effective. Pre-15 lock of legislative interest in regulating local DNA basis basis surprising little political upside for politicians to initiate legislative code pro police use enforcement well, uh, identifies as effective public outcry results from surveillance techniques seems unlikely because it's not to see themselves as the subjects not notified of new techniques in advance. Six is other CJR thumps. The protesters are demanding broader changes that uh, broader changes than the affirmative. Seventh is Trump's XO and broader congressional reform thunk. A WFMJ twenty Trump signed an XO curbing police brutality that all these departments of me credentialing Congress moves towards police bills. So eighth is Trump reverts back to law and order rhetoric and pure, uh, um, inevitably not and Herman twenty Trump signed an XO to protect public monuments accused Black Lives Matter of committing treason through a federal character on protest about retribution labor terrorist Trump Shifting exclusive law and order rhetoric, dropping pretense of addressing police brutality, sector and just conservative based terrorists, diminishing public approval, reinforcing widespread skepticism with systemic views. He's always going to favor his base law enforcement. Yeah. Um, individuals, President Trump will always stand for law and order. Eighth, uh, ninth is the past four years disproved the hedge impact, but there's no hedge impact. Empirics and political psychology prove Trump U.S. postures unrelated to great power peace. Fetch wise in 17, hegemonic <laughs> stability theorists purport to understand the perception of others. Russian protests regarding NATO expansion. We are not taking seriously a quarter. Identify the United States as the greatest threat yeah. to be disagreeing with U.S. policies. Um, motivates counter hegemonic beliefs. The U.S. is not a central to the new peace corps. Never from the relationship. It's extremely hard to identify hegemonic civil existence does so without leaving a trace near Washington. It's funny the intervention's grand strategy seems to matter Con conflict around the world. Hegemonic civil to believe that's susceptible to misreception of the new peace will persist no matter how dominant the US is or what Trump follows. Pr um, predictions are contingent on COVID, which matters most to voters, even if not partisanship means no swing voters. Gear test in 20, the biggest issues of the pandemic and the economy will greatly affect the vote in November. If the economy can improve and by people to hang on a record high unemployment remains Trump will likely lose people's what's already partisanship determines how people vote. A pandemic has shifted a shattered strategy. The economy has taken a sharp downturn. Uh, the gear test evidence is marked at sharp downturn. Okay, you ready? Yep. Uh, first on the disad, the card you read about Trump reverting back to a hard on crime strategy, if that is true, why would he pass the XO? Or like uh, yeah. support the first step, first step act? Oh. Actually, our evidence prices this in. It says that after, like, mid-June, I think it's around June 20th, he thought that his strategy of appealing to moderates and black voters was failing, so he reverted back to hard-on-crime rhetoric. The Nakamura and Herman evidence says he did sign the F XO, but then he was like, oh, this isn't working. My approval ratings are decreasing. I'm going to try to energize the base instead. Wait, which piece of evidence do you read that is – Post XO that says he revert the two AC uh... Nakamura. It says, "quote Trump has shifted almost exclusively to law and order rhetoric, dropping any pretense of addressing police brutality." Okay, but if your answer to the question that you thought I was asking, if Fiat forces him to support the plan, then why wouldn't he shift back to uh, we have appealing to swing voters? A model of Fiat in which the plan is passed by least possible means. We have not defended a model of fiat. I mean, least possible fiat. means still means he signs the bill. Or, yeah. okay. Either he signs the bill or the veto is overcome. It doesn't matter because it, it indicates that small reforms like the AF, which aren't perceived, will not overcome his broader electoral strategy. Okay, the con con counter plan. Um, why uh, do you, the permutation that like does the AF when the amendment's ratified, why did, is there a delay? Uh, the Chisholm evidence indicates that CONCON, that the, that the permutation 
um, that the counter plan introduced the function of time because con cons take so long. So we are permuting the function of time that was introduced in the function of the counter plan. Okay. <laughs> it says it took like 203 years for the first con con to work, which would mean well, yeah, the permutation but would take so long. That it, okay. Um, See, if you if you fiat something if you fiat it happens before the election, then that would totally disrupt the whole country. Everyone would, it would totally swing the election. It would totally civil war the probably, huh? <laughs> probably yeah, civil the war the probably huh? Okay. Um framing, why does yeah. the Simpson card assume that AF or the DA? Um it assumes a world it assumes whether existential risks will occur. They use Bayesian probability to determine that it is very unlikely that war will occur. Yes, maybe it doesn't assume like Trump reverting on alliance commitments, but yeah, actually, it assumes when was that... broader probability. It assumes the broader probability of Wasn't whether war will occur. Wasn't that hard and that Bayesian, al Bayesian analysis, didn't that happen before Trump's election? Yep. But it still can accurately describe the, the probability in every of single war. Yeah, it prices in every X happen. risk. Yeah, yeah prices but in climate still AI. can make them more likely that it doesn't know about. Maybe it's like 0.3%. Okay, thanks. That's helpful. Okay, we're starting prep. All right, so again, a well contested cross examination uh, where they kind of go back and forth. You should, hopefully, you kind of looked at time frame about how much time the two ACs spent on each flow. Um, one thing that I noticed was I thought Gabe was, and everybody so far has been super clear. Um, and there were, it's not that he sounds, and Allison as well, uh, sounded so relaxed while speaking, um, and Sam as well, that all three of them have sounded so relaxed while speaking, um, but being very effective at really opening up their mouth, projecting, but notice that they don't have that sort of like, they're not double breathing or, you know, freaking out about the way they're speaking. And so how that kind of helps, you know, that kind of calm speaking, they're still speaking fast, but they're so efficient with the way that they're using their language. And um, something that I really wanted to highlight about the 2AC is notice how the 2AC used cross-examination, for example, uh, to kind of support some of the arguments that they were making, as well as just logical arguments about the 1AC. So the 2AC doesn't just read a bunch of pieces of evidence. In fact, if you look at the counter plan, there is, it's both counter plans are almost completely analytics. And the reason that they're com almost completely analytics is because the 2A is smart to use the 1AC and is thinking about what is it about the nature of the 1AC and the nature of the process of the counter plans that logically does not make sense or the way the counter plan changes the process of implementation, for example, introduces a delay and how that would function in the world of the permutation uh, and kind of thinks about then the way that that interacts with the links to the net benefit or not. Um, and uses some of the like cross-examination answers to address that issue. So there's more consideration of what the 1AC does and clearly understands the nature of the affirmative enough to do a comparison to like the, the way that the counter plans have tested the affirmative itself. Okay. So if I there are, are you ready? All right. You can keep explaining though while I send it out. No, I'm ready. I was trying to think about what else. Oh, one other thing I just wanted to point out is notice on my flows, if I went to the other side of the page, so I tend to like flip my flow whenever there's more answers so that I can space the 2AC appropriately. And when I do that, I always put an arrow at the bottom of my flow. There are many tales of debaters who have dropped arguments on the back side of their flow, even some of the best debaters in the country, because they just forgot um, in, the, in the hype of their speaking to go to the other side of the flow. So I think it's a good idea to get the practice of putting that little arrow if you ended up putting an argument on the back side of that flow. 
All right, Lexi, whenever you are ready, give us the order. Okay, the order, the order is gonna be the state's counter plan, the K, framing, and then case. All right, is anyone not ready? The counterplane solves the F better and avoids the net benefit. Two ways to frame the counterplane. One, if there's no quantifiable solvency deficit, then the net benefit should outweigh their framing. Contention supports sufficiency framing. Two, judge kick the counterplane if we're leaving it. The counterplane solves racism, refusing to collect, maintain, or distribute DNA samples at the state and local level, it ensures that an arrestee's DNA cannot be presented in court to determine their sentencing. That solves better because the F doesn't delete samples until after someone has been convicted of a crime, which means white juries will still find minorities guilty because of implicit biases. And it solves function creep. One, by removing all samples from state databases and refusing to collect. There's no DNA to be used for function creep. Two, the app still keeps profiles of people convicted in CODIS, which means they don't solve function creep for anyone found guilty. State discretion means the app can't solve only the counterplane. Resolves the root cause. That's their 1AC for evidence. Enormous discretion to the state once it possesses an arrest. DNA generates a legitimate fear for the privacy rights. Federal law does not prohibit states from using DNA samples for whatever purpose the state deems necessary. Alabama provides access to fraud data relative to the causation, detection, prevention, disease, or desirability to medical research. California, Colorado, Texas, Virginia are currently participating in familiar searching. And on to the 2AC1 perm to both one. It links to the net benefit or a link is in the context of Trump receiving credit for the plan. Any federal action ensures that benefit is triggered to their mutually exclusive. States can't stop cooperating with CODIS altogether while retaining profiles after someone is proven guilty on 2AC2. Perm do the act. And the last plank, one, this links to that benefit. Once the plan gets passed, the disad is automatically triggered. That was above two. This permutation is nonsensical. It means that states would testify against the federal government with the federal government's approval. That creates dangerous relations between the federal government and states. That means the legal system is perceived as failing on 2AC3 and 4 that it links to that benefit. The counterplane doesn't. Trump can't take credit for reform of the states, especially when they all act uniformly. His anti-immigrant and racist rhetoric would make it clear that states push for reform, not him. Answer to 2EC5, the immigrant decide one, by refusing to collect migrant samples and sending fake samples, no immigrants can be held accountable based on their DNA collection, regardless of whether they're criminal or not. Two, sanctuary cities and paying for legal representation solves. It means that migrants won't be sent to detention centers or held for a long amount of times onto the six fake DNA bad. It's bad now. That's the entire app. There's only a risk that the counterplane compromises the entire database and all DNA is perceived as faulty, so none can be in court on their Eiler evidence, which was 2AC7, even if the federal government can collect samples, CODIS would still be compromised from the state sending fake samples. That means that samples couldn't be used for convictions or familial testing, and the counterplan still solves a sufficient amount. Most collection happens from local and state enforcers. 85% of immigrant detention centers are non-federal. That's deck 19 And a teaser state license to privately run the issues grown larger than the federal government. 85% are held in facilities that are not federal, and they say 50 state uniform fiat is bad, but it's good. One functional limits, neck burden is too high. This topic is huge, and multi-directional states make the topic manageable for the next state. Politics make uniform fiat necessary. Their interp requires us to have 50 solvency advocates for every single AF because we have to defend independent implementation. This turns their topic education claim because the NEG won't ever be ready and will learn less once they're forced to defend hypergenerics. Two real world sweeping CJR policies are not happening at the national level thanks to Trump and Congress. Focusing on the states is more realistic. Three, reciprocity. If the AF can uniformly fiat any federal actor to enact their policy, the negative should be able to uniformly fiat the state governments to truly test the AF's Fed key warrants, especially on the CJR policy that has historically been a state's issue for best policy option. The next job is to test the desirability of the plan. This is a better alternative. Existence of the net benefit proves five neck flex. The app gets the federal government as an actor. We get every other actor outside of it. Otherwise, the, 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 the counterplane would be topical. Otherwise, making it lose to the perm every time. If they win their counter and trip, we get non-uniform state fiat and at worst reject the argument, not the team. And they say solvency advocate theory, but we have an advocate for state non-compliance. The other planks are an extrapolation of that. It's not a voter. The app doesn't have a solvency advocate. The Trump would sign the plan either. It's reciprocal and their evidence is collaboration with the states and localities is necessary to maintain quality assurance. The counterplane just doesn't comply with those FBI standards. It's their 1AC feral. The DNA identification app requires local, state, and federal laboratories to adhere. The FBI standards participating laboratories must comply with the federal requirements to govern which loci are used for an acceptable profile. The government may not be needed for that far, which is information beyond identification. To K. Can see the perm are not going for it, but I'll answer per current interp. We'll only take one in the two in R and won't apply to contradictory answers. Negation theory. We just have to prove that the plan is a bad idea. Multiple worlds is good. Key to negative ground and negative flexibility and increases strategic thinking. Air app on theory negates a block. Air nag on theory negates a block and control the outcome of the debate by strategically picking certain arguments on a reject the argument, not the team. Framing. 
Preferred impacts with lower probabilities, one value. Every risk of extinction is relevant and every life should have infinite value. Weighing lives equally prevents racially biased outcomes. Two, genocidal logic, their framing inadvertently supports it by saying that certain lives should be prioritized over others, which turns their eugenics framing. Three, blame shift. Their framing works at the individual level, but justifies atrocities when applied to the actions of policymakers, which justifies violence like Bush did with Iraq. And they agree with you, Chul, so you should prefer probability times magnitude. One is slippery slope. Evaluating based on morality is arbitrary. For example, Trump thinks his moral destinies are locked down the border. Two, objective magnitude is the only framework that doesn't require judge intervention, and we still access 100% probable impacts through Turns case. Three, probability only is bad. It justifies a 100% risk of one person dying outweighing a 99% risk of nuclear war. That's ethically bankrupt. Four, doesn't assume debate where dropped arguments are true. That's the only way to determine probability. Five, scope neglect. Humans are incapable of comparing and assessing large risk because we have so few interpersonal relationships. The profound disconnect causes policymakers to focus on short-term problems at the expense of the bigger picture. We turn bias. They prove you should prioritize our impact. That's GPP 17. Cognitive biases lead people to underrate the existential risk of neglect. The size of benefits a little effect on the scale of response. People become number when Numbers get too large. Decision makers are prone to treat existential risk similar to the problems less severe by many orders of magnitude. On to their answers. Uh, first was policy paralysis. Scope neglect turns it. It's good to prioritize existential risk because we naturally underestimate the material impact, which means even if we do defer to existential risk in debate rounds, that's good. They say ripple effects, but we also access that preventing extinction is a prerequisite to improving life incrementally because life is the gateway to all value. And they say decision paralysis. One, no link. Our impact is large, not infinite. Two, it's good that the math, the math tips in our favor. We have biases against existential risk. So math is the only objective way to understand the scope of our impacts. And yes, we can do math. The numbers are just larger. We should just be better at it. They say Simpson, there's only a 0.2% risk of the decide. One, Simpson doesn't assume the F. Two, the Bayesian model only incorporated factors pre-Trump. Three, this card is a huge assertion. It's the ass burden to prove that it accounts for democratic failure, Trump, COVID, et cetera. Go to case. The one I see evidence is too many holes for you to believe they sufficiently solve anything. One, there's no inherency for their migrant scenario. Their evidence just says that they might stop Trump from starting to collect migrant samples. There's nothing happening in the status quo that solves. Two, collection of DNA upon arrest thumb solvency. One, DNA for proof of guilt still occurs. DNA infallibility influences jurors to believe that DNA is credible, so they will still make false convictions based on contaminated evidence and statistical errors. That ensures racial discrimination and prosecutor favoring. Two, one I see cross six conceded that samples in CODIS now stay there. That means that 49% of the database is still minority DNA proves they can't solve the myth of black criminality because statistics still show that they're more likely to convict crimes even if overall there are less samples taken three their trigger evidence says officers have an incentive to make their departments look good with high conviction rates that means they won't stop collecting samples upon arrest for implicit biases police officers associate racial and gender discrimination to arrest individuals serves as incentive to obtain samples and force at hand guilt and the plan gets circumvented one is local databases independent rules and infinite number of DNA samples ensures enough of an incentive for police officers to expand data basis through use of private laboratories. I'll answer their answers. First, they say they must follow regular regulations, but local private databases are not allowed to be part of CODIS, so they have no incentive to follow regulations. Two, they say they're only tiny labs. No, companies like 23andMe are huge that are giving samples to the police and collect millions of samples worldwide. Three, they say there's no fun funding. Yes, the Craig evidence said they get funding from the local governments, and local databases are essentially unregulated. That's Marshall and Gable 14. Local DNA databases operate under their own rules. They catalog a far greater number of DNA samples on their state and federal counterparts. Local agencies are able to exercise great discretion in the collection and use these limits to not extend to state and local DNA databases. DNA can be retained to use in investigations of Ukraine samples or not available for entry to the national database. Localities keep the DNA profiles on their own local databases, little to no guidance and regulations. And two, private databases, GED, Match 23, and Me, Ancestry.com. All of these companies take DNA for which the police can request and utilize. That's one you see Roman Santos and legal loopholes within consumer genetic databases make government misuse and privacy violations inevitable. That's RAM 19. DNA search in the consumer genetic databases were identified through partial magic between primacy DNA samples and often rel relatives. More than 60% of Americans of European descent amounts of massive failure of democratic accountability. GED, Match, Family Tree, Native Public, and working with law enforcement, nor have they volunteered the name as many strikes from the individual have or to use not home genetics test. Uh, you good for cross -ex? Yeah. Cool, I gotta pull up a timer, one second. Um, cool. Uh, the second argument on permutation do both I have it's mutually exclusive. What was the warrant for that? States can't stop cooperating with CODIS altogether while retaining profiles after someone's proven guilty. Okay, it's just that plank is impossible. Okay, yeah. the permutation right below that, you said that the permutation would cause the states and federal government to like get in a fight. My question is, how would that sig what would the signal of that permutation be then? It would be that like legal mechanisms of the United States are no longer working if the federal government is approving for the states to testify against the federal government. So your argument is the federal government just looks totally inept in the world of that permutation. 
Yeah. Okay. You cool. probably make the argument and that somehow the Trump plan looks would amazing. Look like, how does Trump look amazing in a world where the federal government just looks totally inept? Are you saying how it's the links to the net benefit? No, I'm, I'm making a shields the link argument. Like, your argument yeah, is that so, under this permutation, the federal government just doesn't work anymore. Why would people be like, oh, time to vote for the incumbent? Yeah, it shows that the federal government isn't working anymore, but it also shows that the AF would still supposedly solve, like, the collection of minorities. I guess if you make this permutation, okay. either that you don't solve the AF that's, through the permutation yeah, that's fine. and it's net worse. That's the argument insane. right below it um, that Trump couldn't take credit because he's been racist, the counter plan would be out like Republican governors do the counter plan, presumably, correct? S would it's Republican the governors. The state's counter plan. What do you mean Republican Yeah, governors? so Republican yeah. governors would do the counter plan. Not all governors are Republican. The 50 states have like different okay, but sets of governors. In the governors in it doesn't matter whether they're Republican or not. It's the fact that the states are doing it, so it wouldn't affect the presidential election. Because people just perceive parties as being totally distinct at the local and it's not a levels. question of parties. It's a question of the fifty states doing it. Okay, um, that's probably fine. The argument about um, how states can put incorrect samples in the database. What evidence have you read that if the database is compromised, the federal government will just give up on it? I don't think we make the claim that they'll give up. It just like makes the claim that if CODIS is compromised, that like juries will no longer find it reliable. Like it's no longer objective evidence for them to use. To why? Like if you're, if we are, we both agree that juries are like have implicit biases. Why would they just be like, oh, they're compromised. Yeah, therefore so we're not going to use it and anymore. testify and say this evidence is unreliable because there's a mix of fake samples and real sa uh, samples. Where in the counterpoint does it fiat that fiat that states will testify? In, that was against the, the CODIS That's database. The, that was the plank you try to perm. That's the plank where they just say so. Your argument is they also go to court and defend that CODIS fails. They testify. That's what the plank is. Okay. That's Announce fine. that DNA evidence is incredibly unreliable and offer to testify to the fact in any court case in the United States involving the use of DNA evidence. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm going to take some prep statements. All right, everybody take a second to organize your uh, your flows and take a look. It's interesting the 1AR decided just to take prep. That might not have been something that uh, you've noticed happened before. Um, you might want to think about the strategy of why the 1AR would take prep right before the 1NR and how that um, maybe helps the affirmative, but maybe not so much the negative. Because um, ideally, they will, should be prepped for a 1NR by the time they get there. Uh, but also notice, you can see Lexi and Allison very intelligently continuing to prep um, and think through some of the arguments and improve some of their arguments instead of kind of wasting uh, when their opponent is using their prep time. So it's very smart. Yeah, I'm just making sure y'all are still prepping, right? My mute is on. Sam, are you still prepping? I think so, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the next thing that uh, I wanted you all to note is think about what you think the 1NR should be going for given what the 2NC extended. Um, and kind of what's necessary for them to go for. And maybe... All right, I have 624. Sorry, right. I, you, I'm not interrupted you. That's all right. All right, go ahead whenever you're ready, Allison. Sam, did you stop prep? Yeah, 624. Okay. Whoa. Uh, I think the dot should be saying.
Allison, while we're waiting for you to set up, what's the order? Okay, the order is the CONCON -con counter plan and then the DISAD. Is anyone not ready? Okay. Sorry, sorry, I need to hold up. Okay. It just came through for me. On the counter plan, we'll concede the permutation. We're not going for it. The condition, or con con bad is just a reason to reject the argument, not the team. Conditionality, interpretation, we get three conditional advocacies and we can't kick planks. First is often strategic decision making. Multiple condom makes you have to choose their best arguments and the neg collapse to their best policies. That teaches debaters how to evaluate and compare their own arguments, which builds strategic argumentative thinking. Neg flex, it's necessary. A sub point is topic bias. CJR is already absurdly broad. The AF gets any small bi directional reform. B sub point is AF bias. The AF gets first and last speech plus two AC re, re clarification. Of their, neg, of their plan text condo is key for the neg to adapt in the block to a 1AC we're inherently less familiar with. Next is defense strat and time skew are inevitable. one ends will prolift disads and T if they can't get conditional advocacies. No perf con means no impact, which was the two and C reject the argument, not the team. The disad. Trump re-election causes extinction. He would feel more empowered to pursue retrenchment, pull out of NATO, dissolve alliances. It causes regional security competition in Europe and Asia, nuclear proliferation, international shifts towards nationalism and xenophobia, all of which are existential risk. Also, Trump re-election leads to irreversible and catastrophic climate change, star 19. Trump's second term would be far more durable. Eight years of Trump will be impossible to undo. Climate change will become much harder to address. The biggest difference between would be irreversibility to keep warming below 1.5 degrees emissions must drop. Re-election would put national commitment to decarbonization while encouraging other countries to do nothing as well. Change that is delayed becomes it more economically and politically difficult if if we wait another decade, it will be 9%. The economic disruption and popular resistance may be more than our political system can bear. The world might hit irreversible tipping points, which would do us to catastrophic sea level rise. The effects of climate change are bound to be convulsive. But Biden's our only hope to solve Biden's our only hope to solve climate change in Biki 20. A Democratic win in November could remove 2.7 gigatons. US progress would have to be accompanied by China, India, Europe. Global cooperation goes beyond Paris. The EU is looking to make a green new deal. China invested 83 billion in renewables. If you add the US, that's over half the global economy. The dishad turns the case. First is international stability, diverts resources and funding away from criminal justice reform. Second is that Trump knows how to be strategic for, for the campaign, but after he's elected and has nothing to lose, will have free range to implement policies that surveil black and brown people worse than DNA databases. Third is that Biden solves that case because he'll enact comprehensive criminal justice reform. Fourth is that Trump re-election permanently cements white nationalist fascism, Hassan 18. Uh, democracy is in crisis. Minorities are under fire. We are heading towards a militarized authority and surveillance state. Dem Democrats seem to unwilling to recognize the existential danger that Trump poses. Nonstop struggle against incipient rough fascism and unabashed white nationalism. The job is to negotiate with Trump only to defeat them. Uh, 2AC1 is that their evidence doesn't price in COVID. I'll answer this on the Gutierrez card. They say Trump wins now, but Trump will lose now. He needs a strategy to widen his appeal because a base only approach fails. Biden is ahead in key swing states, but they're still malleable. That's the hill evidence. 2AC must do is from Fox News. So obviously says Trump will win. Prefer po polls over models. Also, Biden Biden is leading in the six main swing states, Premier 617. Biden has expanded his edge in six swing states, Arizona, Florida, Michigan, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin will determine who wins in November. Biden's edge grew them from the last poll. Uh, they say that partisanship is locked in, but no, swing voters exist and will determine the election. Schaffner 20. Clinton's loss was attributed to millions of Obamas who shifted to Trump as many as one in 10 Trump voters considered voting for somebody else in 2020. Swing voters do exist, but any that has a two vote effect on the margin. Mobilizing can be challenging. Trump voters who might change their minds only 40 10 percent seem to go up for grabs. The fact is these voters are at least considering voting for a Democrat is important. Aversion can sink even lower. They say that there's, they say that it's too far away, but the 2AC didn't read any evidence for any of these blippy assertions to be true. They have no evidence to substantiate the claim that Trump will, uh, that, that Trump will cancel it or that Russia would hack. So you shouldn't assume that that's true, but black swans are unlikely because COVID means there are less bills. So the, so pa being passed, the, each one gets magnified. Also predictions are possible just because they were wrong in 2016 isn't a reject to, isn't a reason to reject it wholesale. They say nobody cares about DNA, but the one in C Chung evidence says Trump is an opportunist taking advantage 
percentage of the void left by candidates not talking about CJR, which means even if the plan should be small, he'll blow it up and make it a central campaign issue. Even if the plan is small, new, bi new bipartisan reform creates momentum for follow on measures. Mooney 219. Bipartisan reform is a powerful tool for reaching across ideological divisions, which can lead to comprehensive reform. The problems in our justice system remain formidable. Several years ago, few of us would have imagined that Trump would tell criminal justice reform can spark continued chain of reform. Uh, uh, lastly, criminal justice reform is the most important issue in American politics. The F will be widely reported and perceived. Any policy gets blown up because of the political context. They say that other CGR thumps. There's no evidence that other reforms are coming besides the app. They say the EXO thumps, but the EXO wasn't enough. Should be 20. Activists call it red crimes or widespread public demonstrations that change this executive order as red crimes. Activists want more. They say um, that Trump reverts back, but extends solemn. Trump has shifted tactics since being tough on crime in 2016. He's attacked Biden's harsh drug policies and is trying to portray, him, portray himself as a criminal justice reformer, proven by the recent EXO. That strategy is failing now because he doesn't have the proof in the pudding and hasn't done anything significant to follow up the First Step Act. Right now, it's just posturing and bragging. Um, they say it, it, uh, he won't revert back. He has a whole team of well-funded strategists that no swing voters will determine the election and are the most important uh, factor in determining his re-election. The card is just about his tweeting, but doesn't assume his network of strategists. The hedge, the Fatwise card, it, our impact isn't about hedge, but specifically retrenchment, uh, retrenchment and uh, COVID doesn't, oh no, computer, come on. Uh, COVID doesn't thump. McClose, oh, that was so brutal. <laughs> All right, uh, 624. All right, so even good debaters have computer issues. <laughs> uh, one of the things that, so I want you all, we've been talking in our lab a lot about how to do F comparison. And we even did like a little drill with the elections day in particular with two pieces of evidence that everybody did. So if you look at your flow, number one, you can see like, you can criticize my flow right now. What can you tell just by looking at what happened on my flow? What can you tell that I did not do enough of? Spacing, right? I didn't really space my flow adequately in order to kind of address the way that the F comparison was going to expand out in the negative block. So I wonder if maybe you all did the same thing or made the same mistake I did. Uh, the, think about you know, some of the comparisons that were made on the uniqueness debate in particular, given that we've done this drill and talked about you know, Biden win versus Trump win uh, in 2020. So, Think about some of those comparisons. Um, and then there's also a good example of responses to conditionality. We haven't really talked as much about conditionality in lab yet, um, but if you were you know, having a hard time with condo, uh, maybe checking your flow on that and looking at that later, using this as an example for when we do talk about condo, the one at R. Let us know, Sam, whenever you're ready. Three thirty-seven. Sorry, yes, I did that. Sorry, I lost the file. One sec. While he's looking for that file, uh, 
Also a reason why we should be always saving our documents in the same place in a folder that we know. Uh, so uh, <laughs> the, I want you all to think about the 1AR is obviously time pressured. So the 1AR needs to like think about strategically how much time they should be spending on each flow. I want you all to think about how much time would you spend on each flow case or like the advantage area framing, there's the election state, state's counter plan, whether or not you think it would be worth it to extend conditionality or not to 1AR would be another calculation or something to think about um, in that debate. Whenever you're ready, Sam. Uh, order is going to be case framing, uh, states counter plan, elections to set. Is anyone that good? DNA collection goes as a racial uh, profile over criminalized minorities, increased rates of false convictions of innocence, refuel cycles of incarceration that enables criminal uh, justice and violence to live line. The migrant is inherently Trump is implicated in the rule now, which is the host of the nervous state. A uh, collection correct collection on the rest doesn't thumb because there'll be less in codes to match to. Codes will be gradually expunged over time because they rely on new samples to do a uh, keep it up, which is our Ahmed Evans police. Uh, the police don't thumb even though we, we don't solve all police. We lower the amount of arrests they can make and push them away from uh, racial discrimination. Local uh, doesn't thumb. They drop the argument that they must comply with the federal standards because they want to participate and codes to be part of a great national database and to get federal funding that the, uh, the private databases don't matter. 23 Me is tidy. Also, the card in the bottom of the one error says that only white people of European descent have their stuff at 23 Me and police, most for the most part, don't participate with 23 and Me. It's a tiny old cost that we solve on most of federal dollars. Uh, they have custom off. They don't follow the new standards, which is the argument I made above. The private thing was answered as well. The uh, framing debate, the, uh, the framing debate probability comes for extinction. It first is conjunctive fallacy. Multiply the distance internally together. There are hidden assumptions in each scenario that make it low risk from the start, which means that uh, you should kind of uh, artificially lower a second is probability solves extinction. They uh, didn't really answer the Cardoff's givens very well. It says combating ongoing violence is historically better, reduce risk than speculating on future excellent risk. For example, less racist violence makes society more free and innovative in response to crisis. We don't uh, prioritize certain lives. All lives are equal, but probability first prevents pushing ongoing violence under the rug. It's not a moralistic claim, it's a probability claim. Uh, probably it's not probably only uh, we agree at per uh, to one per one C crisis that uh, below the virtue of statistical noise, you just gonna decide drops are not true. Those above school neglect is not true for debate. All we talk about is nuclear war and not racism. You're uh, but and you're also biased towards a good story, which the kids of the bias stuff there. Uh, we don't underestimate that was above the uh, objectivity of math. Uh, you should obviously scrutin rigorously scrutinize the internal links to be more objective. The 0.2% argument uh, that Monty Cart says is policy paralysis. It prevents any uh, positive action. The president makes it impossible to address violence to anything and hypothetically kill everyone. Uh, the 2.9% the 0.2% argument, the uh, states can't apply the sufficient term is bad because the, the impact any solvents have is thousands of lives. Don't judge it because it makes us give uh, two, uh, two, uh, two, two, two ARs permutation. Uh, do the uh, permutation solves any reason why juries are bad. A uh, permutation to the app in the last playing of the counter plan. It would end DNA science on the grounds that's faulty and wrong. Trump would not get him uh, the campaign on New Big CGR. cross says the permutation makes the federal government look really inept. Means that Trump looks like a really bad leader. It calls him to lose the election. It uh, makes all the swing letters uh, go, flee away from Dallas to cross. Uh, Dallas cross. They say states uh, take out the app. They rely on code participation, so the discretion doesn't matter. Dallas on case. The links that benefit are good. GOP uh, legislatures and governors will incite turnout if they do the counter plan. They make swing letters more willing to vote Trump and GOP generally because uh, voters go uh, vote, voters vote on straight to attend the vote on straight ticket the like, on straight ticket the uh, Trump gets credit. I'm the conceded argument that Trump won't take credit because he's anti-immigrant and racist that uh, takes out the this that'll be more uh, below the uh, now the immigrant this had the uh, immigration data just collecting data from 700,000 per year at the border which is the exclusive federal jurisdiction and the states can't control the impact is wrongful with detention and deportations even uh, fake symbols don't solve because they uh, violate immigrant privacy by uh, swabbing their cheeks in the first place sanctuary cities don't solve either because uh, ICE can just go in alone if they match someone have a wrongful conviction and deportation no this is the capital curse the whole database the Isla Cars is the FBI and the DEA will still arrest millions of people. It's, it's not impossible. States can't, uh, states, states can't just go to court and there's no evidence. They just have the civil war argument that if states try to infringe on state and federal courts, they would just cause a civil war that would trigger retrenchment, trigger climate change, and disrupt the entire uh, and disrupt the entire nation. It doesn't compromise codes because the federal government can obviously, even if there's less quality, quality of codes, the federal government can still keep it um, not to do so. It's not about the detention there. It's about uh, the border. Now, the elections, they said uh, they dropped the hedge impact. The one that blew it off. That why it says 50 years of analysis indicates the U.S. presence across the globe 
it does not have any impact of racial diets or war retrenchment is the same thing as hedge which is their only answer to one error. The climate thing binds and solve Darby. Uh, totally under Obama, false reflections towards our one side on the best of the event, including the exploits of American futures in the foreign markets, Biden, as well as pro possible energy voting records, national government future, as well as the new more renewable energy market card, and energy deterrence case requires them to win the whole dish. It doesn't divert money, there's no impact to it. Trump is already surrounding people, but he doesn't, he can't do it for DNA, which means he uh, won't be fast anymore. Biden won't pass these because he's uh, racist and he passed the prime bill. Uh, they, they only can see that Biden's winning every swing state now. That means you need this, you need this overwhelms to link the promo card says he's killing Trump. This evidence says it's inevitable that Biden will win, and the plan's not big enough to change that. But the black swans argument obviously is true. Trump or Biden could die. There could be a Supreme Court, but you see the Supreme Court make a ruling. There could be a new executive order. There could be an October surprise, like a new scandal, which all of them are too uncertain to vote on this advantage. They say uh, Trump's going to uh, blow up the plan. The, they can see the partnership is uh, locked in. The, the GOP will never leave Trump, but the Democrats hate him inevitably. Also, they dropped the COVID argument at the bottom of the speech. Get arrested. This partnership is locked in. But the swing board exists. They will all be turned by economic measures. They care way more about their livelihoods than they do about CJR because COVID is literally killing the economy. Thumbers, Black Swans, here in Husky 20, other six issues, 30% rate 5 is important to the 2020 so healthcare, security, gun policy, education, the economy. These are a part of the increased importance of issues. Three quarters of the infrastructure is important. The Trump will not blow up the, uh, the Mooney cards about new kinship, which isn't a plan. Trump will not blow up the plan. He, uh, the, the uh, plan is nobody cares about data collection. It's not what the protesters want. It's seen as a rare instance where policing is fair and objective. And there's no way that reform of DNA databases will overcome the entire uh, structure of things against Trump. The alpha will not be seen as a response to protest, but as Trump misdiagnosing the problem, which is the Krieg evidence. starting now. All right. So I want you to think about kind of the structure of the 1AR. The 1AR is incredibly time pressed, um, but they need to make a decision about what are the most important two AC arguments. So the first thing is notice that the 1AR is explicitly expending particular two AC arguments and then answering some of the analysis that the negative block makes on those arguments. Uh, when he's on the election CA kind of jumps down to the no impact, uh, the FetLife arguments below, and then also the COVID um, arguments. And so those, uh, those arguments, why do you, the question is, why do you think he jumps down to the bottom of the flow um, first before kind of going up to talk about some of the uniqueness parts of the debate? And that's something to consider. Um, then on the counter plan, there's extensions of the PERM debate. And then a question of how the, think about what the key questions are here on the state's counter plan. Um, and on the solvency part of the debate. It's kind of a question of, there's two, it seems like a couple of main distinctions that are happening. Number one, is it important, is the database itself the key to how people are um, racially categorized um, as criminals or stereotyped as criminals? Um, or is it also the way that the DNA is used in the courts themselves? So one of the clear distinctions in the plan text is the plan says that after conviction, the DNA is eliminated um, and or after a trial, right? So that means that the DNA still is used in trials, maybe still has a perverse incentive for police to use that DNA. And so the question that the state's counter plan, besides it just being the states doing the action, notice that the planks of the counter plan are also a little bit different. They're not just doing the plan, but they um, you know, kind of mess up the way that DNA can be used in trial. And so there's kind of a dis there's two different facets here. One, should the states be doing it and how is that perceived? But also the action of the counter plan itself is distinct from just have the states do the plan exactly as it's enacted. And why do you think that is? Um, given the solvency deficit to the counter plan is whether or not they can affect uh, CODIS or the federal statutes on the DNA databases. If 
it's true that states can't just like go in and affect the way that the database is used because it's a federal database, then the states had to, the negative needed to be a little more creative in how it wrote the state's counter plan. And it wasn't just, you know, we should do the plan because it could not technically do the plan exactly as it's done. So you need to, when you're resolving the solvency debate on the counter plan, presuming that they're going for the counter plan, they, which they don't necessarily have to, um, they would have to look at kind of the way that the counter plan is implemented in a distinct fashion versus the way the plan action occurs and whether or not it's sufficient to solve some of the same problems, but also a question of is the act sufficient to resolve the way that DNA is used in courts, um, federal courts, but also in state courts uh, themselves. So there's a little trick to this counter plan and we'll see whether or not the 2NR has decided, you know, we talked about this in lab a little bit, is it better for the 2NR to go for case and the DA at this point, or is it better for them to go for the counter plan and the disad, or maybe one of the case arguments to complement a potential solvency deficit of the counter plan and then the elections DA. Either way, what is the one thing that has to be in the negative block, or in the 2NR, I mean, and consider that, but then what are the options that the 2NR has to kind of mitigate the risk of AF of the affirmative harms? Right now, as we're waiting for, you know, Lexi to make her final decision about what she wants to do, you should be thinking about what would you do if you were the 2NR in this debate? Okay. Also, maybe mute yourself. Oh, sorry. Okay, the order is going to be the politics disad, the counter plan, framing case. Any risk of turns case is a reason you can vote neg even if they win the entirety of the framing flow. It means that we access their probability arguments and the AF causes more structural violence so you don't even have to vote on high magnitude impacts if you're not comfortable with it. We're not going for the hedge impact, but we will do the CJR turns case. Trump will continue his hard on crime scenes and roll back reforms such as the AF, making it almost impossible for minorities to escape the biases of the criminal justice system, which takes out the affirmative, even if Biden isn't perfect with CJR, such as the 1994 crime bill. He has said that he will make reforms because he needs to, to win over dead voters and climate change causes extinction, find a key to enact warming reform, otherwise research wolves, sea level rise, ocean acidification, famine, disease are all inevitable and culminate to cause extinction. I'm specifically going for this impact because it turns their cognitive bias framing arguments. Climate change is not unlikely or improbable and has been pushed to the back burner for decades, which means you should overcorrect it. Also would hurt minorities first because of, of things like resource words. Their evidence just says that Obama's plan didn't work perfectly, but doesn't mean that Biden wouldn't solve its try or die for anything but Trump. On uniqueness, we control the uniqueness of Our uniqueness evidence is in the context of three specific swing states, all which argue that the African-American vote is the reason for Biden's current win, establishing the brink. That's the Premick and Schaffner evidence. Biden's ahead in Ohio, Florida, and Michigan, which are the biggest swing states. Our evidence indicates that ethnic discrimination is a key voting issue and why Trump is alienating swing voters now. If he could win back just a tiny margin of black or youth votes in swing states from taking credit for a criminal justice reform bill, he would win. They didn't read any new uniqueness evidence, which means that ours controls the brink and link the link controls uniqueness, which means uniqueness can't overwhelm. They didn't answer the specificity of our links. There's three 
first that the black voters linked that was the Chung evidence. Trump is desperate for a way to campaign and will center the plan as him being the new criminal justice reformer in the center of media cycles. And two, in order for them to solve minorities would not no longer be targeted or arrested for DNA, which means black voters would perceive the plan positively to its wedging issue. That's because most voters hate both candidates, but Biden's history with the 1994 crime bill makes him look worse when it comes to CGR. Even if the plan is really small, Trump can use it as a small shift forward that he needs to show that he's willing to reform the criminal justice system. We will win, but this is an independent reason why the link overwhelms the warrants of their a uniqueness evidence, and they dropped Mooney. Even if the plan is small, it results in bipartisan measures that results in CGR policies that are much bigger than DNA. That's the momentum link. The federal government post plan would have momentum to continue reforms of the criminal justice system, especially if Trump knows that's the only way for him to win. Trump would like the positive feedback from the plan and continue to pass small reforms to secure his win. So even if DNA reform may not be enough to overcome the uniqueness argument, this, the, this argument approves by CGR as a whole is enough. They're thumpers. There's a few that they extended first was the XOR. Shoopy evidence says it wasn't enough. and was highly criticized. The app is different. If they saw it would mean that the police would suddenly not arrest minorities nearly as much, which would be perceived as a big one. The plan is different. Even though she didn't specifically answer Corona in the one in our, it was implicitly answered. Our uniqueness evidence postdates Corona and proves that Trump can still win, which is our brink arguments and magnifies the link because it shows that Trump knows he's in hot water and will be willing to twist the plan in any way possible. Their other, uh, their, bla their black swans card doesn't disprove it. We give a specific scenario for something that could turn voters back on to Trump. Obviously, some things like Trump dying or Biden dying could happen, but that's not a reason why he wouldn't get swing voters because of the plan. They say that partisanship is locked in, but our uniqueness and link evidence assumes that and says that voters would still flip on it. On the counter plan, I'm not going. I can see the permutation framing. We're significantly ahead on framing. Any risk of the DA returns cases of reason to vote neg. Cognitive bias turns all of their offense. That's the GGP evidence. We are biased to under evaluate existential risk because we don't have the capacity to understand their magnitude. That makes us do things like vote on an app that probably doesn't solve anything, even when existential impacts are in the picture. That does assume the debate space. Probability times magnitude is best. They dropped our warrants. First, evaluating best based on just morality and probable impacts is a slippery slope. It's arbitrary. For example, Trump thinks his moral destiny is to lock down the border. Second was genocide logic there. Framing supports genocidal logic by saying that certain lives should be prioritized over others just because there's a probable impact now in blame shift. Their framework works at the individual level just, but justifies atrocities when applied to the actions of policymakers. And magnitude is the only objective way to evaluate impacts in the round. Our impacts still into, take into account low probability impact through turns case, which solves all of their offense. The only thing they really went for was that probability solves extinction, but that links to them just as much. If background noise implicates our impacts, so do theirs. We can still use a linear mode of causality if we prove our internal link chains are more influenced by the plan than statistical background noise. It's their burden to prove how helping coded databases would spill up to solve big impacts or what exactly the ripple effects would be. We more likely solve extinction. The conjunctive fallacy argument was our, uh, our, uh, done above, and the only other argument they had on scope neglect was that it's not true for debate, but uh, I, it is. I did that above on case. We're ahead on circumvention, so you could literally vote neg on presumption. It's in Craig Mercel and Gabe. It says that local databases operate under their own rules. They only said that there's no incentive for them to, to, to apply, but our Craig and Gable evidence says that they aren't allowed to participate in the CODIS database, so there's no reason for them to comply. They're able to exercise their own discretion for collecting and using DNA samples because they aren't eligible for national databases, so they don't have an incentive to comply anyway. And Graham says that DNA samples and consumer genetic but databases such as 23andMe, GED, Mash, and Family Tree DNA have publicly acknowledged working with law enforcement. It's not just white people. It's millions of people globally, which means that at least they don't access a significant amount of their impact and you can defer to our impacts. I think 324. I'm going to run it. I think it was 337. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Sam. Okay, sorry. 337. All right, so you're now um, looking at they did not go for the counter plan, right? So something to think about is the affirmative, is there anything on that flow that the affirmative could use potentially? Maybe some background, just like a brief thought, is there anything strategic? If not, then that flow basically goes out of the debate. We can now see if that flow goes out of the debate, you're now looking at really, you know, three sheets of paper, or I have it on two because I just have part of it. Notice how the two and R is extremely precise. Lexi's a very, very good debater. Extremely precise about which arguments are being extended on the case debate. She does not need all of the arguments that were in the negative block. She only needs the most important ones. And notice when she talks about those case arguments, it's in context of what she has decided to go for on the disadvantage. So in other words, she's not talking about probability just in general, but the probability of climate change. 
right? Or the turns case argument. She puts that, that when you are evaluating turns case and you're evaluating climate change, that what, how does one look at the framing debate? And putting that in context, I think, is really what distinguishes the top debaters in the country from debaters who, you know, are, are making a lot more vague arguments about, you know, what probability means in general. And so when you're getting feedback um, for your practice debates and your judge is saying things like, well, we need you to be more comparative, really that's what they're saying is instead of saying probability outweighs magnitude or magnitude outweighs probability you're talking about what does what arguments what impacts in this specific debate are more probable why are they more probable why are they bigger why does the probability of climate change versus the probability of, of the criminalization of racial groups or black people within America, how does the judge look at that, especially if the negative is winning a turns case argument about what happens in a world of a Trump re-election. Um, and so, you know, thinking about that a lot broader, I think is much, or in context, I should say, is much more important than making kind of the vague probability outweighs, or magnitude outweighs probability, which is what the negative is going for. Um, also, I want to kind of pull out a couple pieces at the top here. Notice that um, she's very strategic in the way that she is explaining the 2NR. The impact debate is here at the top. And there's kind of a large overview explaining. Notice she does not go for all of the impacts, right? She doesn't need to win leadership collapse and uh, climate change and a turns case story. And so she errs on the side of depth of argument to resolve those debate parts of the debate instead of, you know, just going for all of them. So making those choices makes her a better 2NR. Um, and then it goes to the uniqueness debate, but notice there's this little kind of phrase in between uniqueness and link here where she explains why she thinks she's winning a lot more of the link debate. So she wants to characterize the judge's decision-making process by explaining that the link controls the direction of uniqueness, that even if um, it looks like, even if they were to start to win some of their uniqueness claims, that the plan is so large, they're winning such a large risk of the link debate, that ultimately it would sway enough voters to overcome maybe some of the deficiencies that she, that if the judge were to make that decision, right, uh, that the uniqueness was not on the negative side, that the size of the link debate, the overwhelming nature of the link debate means that the uniqueness gets pushed in a different direction. And so she's smart to kind of put that kind of story together by saying link, link controls uniqueness and then logically goes into the link debate, then addresses the defensive arguments, the thumper debate here at the bottom, plus the black swans arguments, and then also justifies COVID answers and says these were answered implicitly by the 1AR to kind of argue that you know even though like allison's like oh i didn't get there in time or my document or whatever happened with her computer there that really some of that reasoning was above in the 1ar and so she's kind of saying this is a logical cross application um, to that story you oh. can decide whether or not you think that's true all right go ahead Gabe. yeah decide after the speech um the order is case uh in the order of substance framing uh then the decide DNA collection outweighs and overcriminalizes minorities, leads to false convictions that fuel incarceration and structural racism. The AF meaningfully <gasps> decreases the ability of the government to discriminate based on genetic markers. Circumvention is wrong. One, it's just not a reason the AF is a bad idea, which means any risk of the AF outweighs if I win <gasps> sufficient mitigation of the dishead. Second is they drop the immigration <gasps> and the federal arrest impact from the counterplan. That is 750,000 immigrants and millions more <gasps> and millions more who are arrested and sampled by the federal government alone. That's the Isler evidence. We are at least <gasps> solvent in that area, which is a massive impact that our own evidence says 
Coders causes biotechnical eugenics. Third, they conceded yes. that states care about participation in coders. Only we have predictive evidence about this. They want yes. to be part of a massive national database with national connections to participate. Yes. They have to follow federal quality standards, which regulates local labs too. They have yes. status quo descriptive evidence, not predictive evidence. That's yes. quick. Third is private labs are tiny. Their 2NT evidence yes. is just about Americans of European descent, which doesn't implicate the racism argument. And yes. the police rarely cooperate with them. And federal police definitely can't because of regulations, which means yes. none of this stuff matters. The framing they break proper probability comes first. We have impact turned <laughs> extinction for me, and it makes sense in the context of this. This at first, this policy <laughs> paralysis is dropped. The magnitude of extinction is so large that we can <laughs> never take any positive action. Think about it, what it means for everyday life. You literally couldn't go to school because the probability of death is too high, which internally turns all their arguments about why Biden is good for criminal justice because their ethical frame makes <laughs> that impossible. It's illogical and means we are unable to resolve any violence in the status quo. Second <laughs> is it solves extinction better. Uncertainty means speculating on future <laughs> extinction risks makes us less likely <laughs> to solve them, but more likely to perpetuate racism. Their only answer to Kar Karnofsky was it's not specific, but the 1AR <laughs> said explicitly rest racism makes society more peaceful and more democratic <laughs> at the margins, which internal link turns the link and the impact <laughs> to the 2020 dissent and, and it just outweighs the cognitive bias argument goes after their argument, which simply <laughs> that people talk about extras in the debate and that's good, but it just proves that there is cognitive bias in the first place because it proves that we are competitively <laughs> incentivized to over-focus on large magnitude impacts such <laughs> as they have a large magnitude in this impact in this debate that they probably aren't able to solve, but you still <laughs> want to cop out on it, which just proves you should over-focus yeah. on probability because of cognitive bias. They also conceded good story bias that yeah. e a longer internal link chains make a story more believable, but less probable in the long term, which yeah. implicates the ability for the dissent to solve anything. The dissent, yeah. proper, I'll answer your turns case at the top. The turns case for Trump, they need to win that the plan is the only factor that influences yeah. the election to win this. They say CGR turns case, it doesn't matter because they can see we get durable fiat, which means yeah. even if Trump is more racist broadly, we still yeah. solve some people in the long term. They say Biden solves, he would make some reforms. Look, he's not sufficient. Try or die yeah. only makes sense in the context of the affirmative if we had read evidence that, that Biden is tied to fossil fuels and natural gas from the Obama administration, which is the only predictive evidence in this debate, which, which means flips try or die, because if the status quo doesn't solve, the only violence that your ballot can solve is, is extinction. The link debate proper, it, yet maybe it implicates uniqueness, but there's a very low risk of it. They have no evidence about the plan specifically. What we do, the Creek evidence from the 2AC indicates that it would not be perceived by voters because voters actually like DNA databases across the board, which means it's more likely the plan that doesn't help Trump. And second, they conceded Sam's 1AR analytic that it is not what the protesters want. All their evidence about why CJR would flip the election is in the context of George Floyd protesters, but the problem is we're not the CJR that this evidence is talking about. We're not broad sweeping enough for it to overcome all of Trump's past racist rhetoric, which is the Nakamura evidence, which means if I win it, which, which means sufficient mitigation of the link it implicates any ability for them to win the dissent, the uniqueness evidence. Obviously, the plan wouldn't be overcome. Their argument in the 2NR was that Trump alienates voters. He still alienates voters through ethnic alienation by talking about BLM as terrorists and signing exos not to take over monuments which means yeah. black voters and, uh, and moderate moms in the suburbs obviously would still be turned off yeah. by trump's xenophobia the black voters like uh, obviously the stuff about covid i'm going to do below prices it in because there are also yeah. swing voters but the arguments about rhetoric above mean that the plan isn't over if plan isn't overcome they have read evidence yeah. that the plan is the precondition for trump having an effective election strategy the, the problem is we have read evidence that trump is never going to take the yeah. election strategy off because he doesn't think it's in his best interest which means he won't yeah. snowball and do more and more reforms but just wipe the plan under the rug the wedge issue argument, the Nakamura evidence postdates their evidence and indicates that Trump <laughs> thinks it's more of a wedge issue to focus on dividing a soft on crime, which <laughs> internally turns this argument, the Corona thumper. Look, Lexi has really good spin in this, <laughs> on this in the 2NR, but it is all new. You should strike it from your flow because 1AR time allocation <laughs> is based on block mistakes. All of their evidence, um, all of the demographics that Lexi point to care more about COVID because it <laughs> implicates their economic ability to survive and is just killing <laughs> hundreds of thousands of Americans right now. Trump looks like an inept leader, which means <laughs> there's no way that they would flip. They, they would flip to him in the status quo. They also have card zero on the links that post dates COVID. This is just a factual statement. All of their evidence is just like <laughs> CJR wouldn't matter. It would be the most important thing. But the problem is we've pointed <laughs> to more predictive, more recent evidence that says COVID outweighs in voters' decision making calculus. Gabe, we kind of hear an ASCII card. The Hiranowski evidence indicates things like national security, health care, and, 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 and infrastructure are more important in voters' minds. Yes, maybe it's not sure that those will happen before the election, but it does mean that there's a low risk that this is the only thing that flips the election, and there's a higher risk that the app solves some violence. Good debate. Good debate. Good debate. We're in person. Everybody would be clapping, just so you all know. Sad not to hear the clapping after a demo debate. But... Uh, I first want to thank you all for debating. Um, and those of you who are listening, um, if you have, I believe you can ask Q&A questions. 
that. If you all click on Q&A, if you add a couple of questions for the debaters, I can pose them. Uh, but if I'm just going to give you all a couple seconds, I'm going to be sending you all the speech documents and, and you all have an assignment to uh, decide or fill out a ballot. The, what do you all think? Um, I just want to kind of hear the debater's perspective on this now that you all have a second to take a deep breath. Uh, Gabe, what do you think? <laughs> The, Gabe, what do you think if you wanted your judges to start somewhere on their flows, what's the one place, like wh walk them through what the starting point for the decision is and then like what you would want them to evaluate in what order if they were judging the state or as a uh, judge? Well, personally, uh, just the way I think about debates, I'd probably start on the dissad. Um, and probably the link debate, because that was where most of the 2IR offense was. Um, Lexi was really good on like turns case analysis. So framing is like kind of important, but it only matters insofar as we win that there's a low risk of the disad being triggered, which is the link debate. Because if the disad causes a lot of structural violence, that might outweigh the AF even if we win the probability framing. So I would probably think about whether the AF is sufficient to swing the election first. Okay, excellent. Lexi, where would you like them to start? Would it be the same place or would it be different? I would, yeah, probably have them start similarly. I would obviously want the turns case and impact to be like weighed a little bit more because that's where our offense is. But I do also think that link evidence in the one in C and um, one in R, the ones that weren't specifically answered in the one AR should be weighed more heavily for the neg. So I would have them look there. All right, so you have the student perspective. I don't see any questions, so thank you again very much all of you and have a wonderful day. Students, go ahead and leave the webinar and go to lab today, or actually we have a break right now. We'll reconvene at uh, 3.45. Go to today's module, though, and fill out the ballot. I will put in pictures of my flows. I will put in the speech documents. And I will put in the assignment to complete a ballot. Um, and then we will meet at 3.45. The documents will be posted in the module uh, for today's daily agenda. So you all can see it there in a second.